In this video, we want to talk about a project that I built called Fine Fitness Classes. Um, I use technologies like React TypeScript, C Sharp, ASP.NET Core to build this application. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to show you a preview of what this application is about. Uh, in demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate what this application can do. And then I'm also going to talk about the design, how I designed this application, um, as well as what are some areas that I can further improve if I were to continue working on this application. So to give you a preview of this application, the purpose of this application for a platform where fitness instructor to post fitness classes and users can be able to log into this application, be able to see what are the best fitness classes that are fits best for them, right? Um, now let's try to explore the application. I basically have our front end running, but if I want to, you know, in this case, you can see instead of our API, we don't have our database. But if we don't have our database, no problem. We can just run our application and this will apply the migrations and it will create a database for us. So we're gonna do .NET watch run. And uh, this will also, what this also will do is instead of our, you know, program.cs, we also seeding our data. And that's why you can see here, instead of our seed data function, right? We, we basically seed our users, seed our training classes, and uh, we save it into our database. Right, and then let's look at our console. Once we have that running, right, now what we can do is we can basically open our database using SQLite. But of course, you can also use other databases as well. But for testing purpose, we're using SQLite. Um, and then we can be able to open that inside our Visual Studio code. And you can see we have users here, right? So you can see we have password hash. Uh, passwords are all hashed, so we won't be able to see what the passwords look like but you can see that clearly we have our email and uh, let's try to log in to this, you know, to this application. Um, and the password is in the seated. So I can open this. Okay, so, so the password is actually uh, seated, which is right here. And I set up like a really default password or like a not very secure password, but for demo purposes, right? So in this case, let's try to log in. Hopefully logs in. If not, let's try to check on the console a little bit. What is it telling us? Invalid password. Okay. Well, maybe uh, one second. Maybe let's try to try this. Okay. So it's in. So let's explore the application a bit. So you can see here right away, uh, we have a couple classes. Um, so we have a total of two classes here, right? And uh, I can also pick the time. So let's say in this case, you can see if I want to attend classes that are, or if I want to select classes that are after, uh, after five or after two, actually, I can do that. So basically I can say select two, 2 p.m. Um, after 2 p.m. in this case, we have one class, right? Um, and uh, I can also select all the classes, classes that I'm going, classes that I'm hosting. In this case, you can see I have to, I'm hosting two classes. Uh, the, these are the time, these are the location. These are the list of attendees, in this case, me, right? So far as me and the description. I can also delete a class. And if I select all the classes, you can see that class was deleted. And it's also deleted inside of our database as well. So if I were to check on training classes, you can see I only have one left, right? Um, and I can also create a class. You can see I, I, you know, I have some default data filled out already and uh, I can also select a time, um, let's say at this moment right here and uh, the, the total spot, let's say is 30, okay? And what's gonna happen? Okay, so your session has expired. So basically what I did here is I, I you know, I added the JW token and I set a expiration time so that, um, you know, after you expire that, that, uh, that limit, right? And it will basically logs you out. So let's just, you know, um, use, or in this case, log in one more time. Okay. And then so far, I think that JWT token is, or the JWT uh, expiration is working, right? Um, and then in this case, let's finish creating our, you know, our, our, um, our group, right? Or our class. Once our class is created, you can see 
I can basically, uh, you know, I have a title, I have the frequency of when the class will be, will be starting and the description, time, location, and also you can be able to leave a comment. Um, now the comment, I use signal R. So basically what happened is that if I post a comment, anyone who's on this page can be able to see the comments without refreshing the page. So it's kind of like pop sub. So one is one person published, the other one subscribing can be able to see the content right away. Um, so here you can see, I can also be able to view myself. Uh, in this case, I have zero following, zero followers. Uh, nothing about me, I can also edit something about me. So this is me, okay? Um, and session expired again. So to extend the time or the expiration time to be a little longer, I can basically come to the start of the CS and basically comment out this one or delete this one. Because what happens is that if, you know, if time passed, then this will give us a 401. So I'll delete this for now and let's continue our video. And here you can see if I were to click on drop a photo, I can go to my download, this photo right here. And basically you can see that our photo pops up and I can basically resize the photo as well. And uh, once this uploads, it uploads to the cloud, it uploads the photo and you can see that my photo is updated. So if I go to, you know, classes, you can see my profile is updated already. And here you can see, this is the backend side of things. So basically all the routes and the uh, inputs and the output schema looks like. So we have our follow controller, our profile controller, and uh, our training classes, right? Be able to uh, do some simple crowd operations. And uh, you can see we also have users. Uh, this is just a demo one. So you can also see we have values as well. So this is what the database relationship looks like for this application. So you can see here that we have user. Uh, user can follow many users and the user can also be followed, being followed, right, by other people as well. So it's kind of like a many-to-many -many relationship. So I created a user following table or join table where user can be able to follow other people and user can also be be, be followed, right, by other people as well. So, and uh, here you can see we also have training class, right? Training class uh, can have many comments and many comments in this case is a joint, it's also a many-to-many -many relationship between training class and user, right? Training class can have many comments uh, and, and the user can also have many comments to different training classes as well, right? Um, or I should say, let's put it this way that training class can have many comments from, di from different users and uh, each user can have many comments in different training classes. So it's kind of many to many relationship here. And the uh, same thing for the attendees or user training class uh, table as well, where uh, tr each training class, right, could have many attendees and user, each user can have also have, can also attend many different training classes, right? So overall, this is the, um, you know, the, the layout of the database relationship. So now I want to talk about, you know, the architecture for this application, which is clean architecture. So basically what clean architecture does is that it decouples our architecture into many layers, right? Or different layers. Um, so traditionally inside of our, or in our model view controller or MVC architecture, uh, we have our view, the client will interact with our web page, right? And it sends a request to the controller and what basically controller does is that it not only handles the request and response, but it also do a couple more things. For example, computing the application logic, right? Uh, persisting data in our database or um, making a API call to a different server, right? So you can see that controller does a lot of things here. So what we can do instead is that we can decouple this, right? Into many layers so that each, or I should say each layer has only one responsibility. Right. And you can see here, we also have our model, which is our data model. Uh, and this is what the clean architecture looks like for our application. Uh, we have our UI, right? We have our um, clients will send a request to the controller and the controller will only have one responsibility, which is to handle the request and the response. And it will basically leave the responsibilities to other layers, right? So you can see here, we have our application layer and this application layer basically computes our application logic, right? And uh, we also have persistence layer, which you can see here, the application depends on the persistence layer. And this persistence layer will basically save our data, right? Or uh, interact with our database, right? Um, and we also have our domain or model, right? Which is basically our data model. Um, so you can see that we have our chain of dependencies, right? So you can see we have, we have our client, depends on the controller, controller depends on our application, 
application depends on persistence. Persistence depends on domain, right? And also application also depends on the domain as well. Um, basically, you can see that we're breaking it into, we're isolating it into multiple layers so that we can be able to test each individual layer more easily, right? Or specifically the persistence layer and the application layer away from the controller, right? Um, and this will basically uh, make the test to be a lot easier, right? We can be able to identify the bug or the issue more easily because now they're all decoupled. And that's one of the, the advantage for clean architecture. And it's mainly geared towards large application. Let's say if we have a small application that's a simple CRUD operation, right? Then there's no point of using clean architecture because it's not that complex. But if our application is very, very complex, then it is more uh, reasonable to use something like clean architecture where we can decouple our, act our architecture into different layers, right? So that each layer will have responsibility. Now you know what clean architecture does to separate the responsibility into different layers. And now I want to talk about CQRS, where it's command query responsibility segregation, um, to how we can be able to separate um, the create responsibility, right? Create, up, delete, update from the querying or getting the data responsibility instead of the, you know, the uh, application layer. So let me show you an example of our current application with CQRS. We have our API layer, our domain, our persistence application layer, right? And you can see here that we have our API, sends a request, sends a command request, right? To update our data in our database through using our persistence layer, right? And uh, let's say if we want to be able to uh, send a query, then in this case, we're basically send a query and we're using data access. In this case, data access is gonna be our entity framework, right? Which basically uh, retrieve data from a database. And you can see that we have our CQRS um, separated, right? We have our command uh, responsibility separated from our, our reads responsibility. But the thing is that it doesn't really make a big difference. Like you won't be able to see a dramatic difference here. But the thing is that let's say in the future, if we wanna scale our application, right? Uh, we want to be able to reduce the number of request load for our our database, right? Because our currently our database supports reads, updates, uh, creates, delete, right? Or reads and writes. Um, so in this case, what we can do is that we can be able to reduce the request load of our database into a two separate database. So one database is optimized for reads, and the other one is optimized for writes. And we're using something called eventual consistency to make sure that those two databases have uh, have the consistent data, right? And uh, you can see here that we can use eventual consistency to write data from uh, reads optimized DB to the reads, uh, sorry, to, from the writes optimized DB to the reads optimized DB, right? When a user or when the API sends a command request, right? However, though, let's say if user wants to make a query in the reads optimized DB, we can even denormalize the data, right? To avoid complex join op operations. For example, let's say we have a complex join query. Then what we can do is that in our reads optimized database, we can basically store tables or we can be able to store uh, data uh, or equivalent data in the same table. Um, and then you can see here that, or we can also use something called NoSQL database, right? To dramatically improve the reads performance. Uh, for example, like uh, DynamoDB or something like Redis, right? Caching, right? Um, or for example, Elastic Elasticsearch, right? Where we need to, you know, show um, for the uh, show the uh, suggestions, right? For the auto completion. But however, though, you can see that CQRS is very, very central when we want to build a scalable application. We can be able to separate query command and uh, sorry, a query responsibility and command responsibilities so that in the future, if we want to implement two different or two different type of database, one is optimized for read and one is optimized for write, we have that option. So now I want to spend some time talking about what are some areas that I can further improve. So I think one of the most important thing that, uh, that I ignored when I first building this application is adding some automate testings. Um, so I think it's very, very important because basically what I did here is I basically did a lot of manual testing, right? To make sure that the app, the API is working, um, the database were able to store data and the front end is working. Like I did a lot of manual testing, 
but I hope that, you know, if I were to remake this application again, then I will probably should definitely add in some automate testings, testing the dependencies, right? For example, the, uh, since we're using clean architecture or clean code architecture, then I think um, every layer is decoupled so we can be able to test each layer more easily, right? Be able to mock those dependencies. And another thing that I will say is, you know, adding more detailed commit message, I think that's very, very crucial. Um, some of the old commit message were very, very vague, like for example, work on it, right? Add changes, update code. Like I wanna be more specific, right? Because in the future, if I, uh, you know, work on something and I know that this is not working and then I can be able to revert back to the previous commit, right? Or the, the, the previous commits uh, or the, 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 uh, the changes. And the, also another thing is I want to make uh, naming to be more consistent. Now, of course, it's very, very important to give a good naming uh, because, you know, if we were to come back and revisit this code base again, then if you give a really vague or naming that doesn't really make any sense, then it's really, really hard to understand what were you doing, right? Um, it's hard for the reader as well to read the code. So I think that's probably what I would improve. And the other thing is probably spending more time on refactoring because I think that there's some logic could be uh, continue to refactor and uh, you know continue to make the code more cleaner, more reusable. So I, I would say those are the key four key points that I could have improved if I could if I were to continue to you know improve on improve this application. Uh, of course, I think that there are more things that I could improve, but those are the things that I could uh, that I that I could think of right now. So, um, so yeah, of course you can see that I built this application two years ago and the code, the, the code, uh, repo is in the description below. So that's it for this video and, uh, thank you for watching.